Hello to our guy friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was max effort bench press day, or basically my upper body day. Uh, for those of you who watch these videos every day, please remember to click like down below. Please help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and only you can do that. So, today I ended up with the random number thing getting one of these banded floor presses and after today I'm taking them out like even my first set here trying to ramp up um, I realized they were problematic I love the floor press with the chains feels great I feel like it has great uh, potential for building max strength with the bands it's so awkward that I can't handle much weight even with 65 pound of band tension which is what this should be uh, it was really awkward on the lockout it pulls me into weird positions just like I'm taking the reverse band squats out. It's not that they couldn't be good in the right scenario. It's just with my rack they're not. And I'm going to replace those with all chains. So any of the regular squatting that I'm getting this out off of a box. It's going to have accommodation. It's going to be chains. Um, same on the floor presses. They're just they're too awkward. And a little bit of awkward is fine. But you know what? Just working against bands is awkward. If I want to get more awkward too. I can always change bars. Um, I feel like because of the way it pulled on it. This has the potential for injury. Um, I feel like with the way it tries to pull you down, you have to slow the eccentric way, way down. And you bleed so much power for the actual lifting that you can't lift nearly as much weight. Because, again, I'm trying not to get jerked down and hit the floor hard on a floor press. Uh, so it, it's not workable. I went ahead and finished it out because I started it. I'm going to finish what I start. But I did realize um, this does have the potential for injury that I really don't want to deal with. Uh, and I've got plenty of other options. We have so many options between the chains, the bands, pin presses, uh, everything else in the rotation that it'll be fine. It'll be fine uh, if I take these out, just the banded ones, because there were only like four of them anyways. So I ended up getting 275 against 65 pounds of bands on a floor press. And, and that was grindy. That was hard to lock. Um, reasonable. And then I went ahead and did all my other stuff. And this workout's going to be long. You guys are going to see what I mean. But now I'm filming all my stuff because I'm replacing uh, my daily chin-ups with daily rows. And I'm just going to work them into my normal workout. And I can always do extra grip training. I can always do extra Metcon stuff, whatever I need to do later in the day. Because my workouts are always going to be in the morning now. Uh, so I don't have to worry about doing the chins later and trying to squeeze in my high volume chins every day. Uh, it works well. But the, the downside is that I'm going to have to film all of it and it's going to make these workouts really long. Fortunately though they're towards the back end and the people who just want to see the max work every day can watch the front and they don't have to watch the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever if they don't care about that. Uh, but for accessory work I went back to the closed grip bench press because uh, as much as I like the dips I don't feel the dips are really going to be necessary. I feel like this is going to build everything I need just fine. Uh, between the closed grip bench and the incline with a closed grip, I think that's going to give me all the chest work I need. Especially considering five sets of each done every other day, so three times a week and in some cases four times a week. That's going to be a minimum of 30 high rep sets for my chest every week. It's got a long range of motion on both of these. It's easy on the shoulders. And that's the main thing I'm looking at is shoulder health. With the volumes of training that I'm doing, and me being past 40, uh, I really care a lot about shoulder health, shoulder longevity. So one reason I pulled the chin-ups out because I did notice there can be a little irritation. Same thing with some of the other exercises. I'm just going to pay attention to that. And I'll work dips back in later. But I just feel like closed grip pressing in general is really, really easy on my shoulders. Very easy on my shoulders. And I can do a lot of it without getting any inflammation. So I, I feel like this is going to be the way to go. And I have the option of other bars because I have a football bar and other stuff. So I have variations of these two lifts available. Just like I do for the other things I use all the time, like good mornings, glute ham raises, all this stuff. I've got variations available with my equipment. I'll make them work. And it's not to say I won't mess with some dips again later. I really like the banded dips. Um, I feel like they're a great exercise, so I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying, oh, they're bad, they're dangerous. It's just that I've been experiencing some shoulder irritation and I'm trying to maintain these training volumes without having that problem. And so far, it's been pretty good uh, since coming back. Like even today, I felt a little bit of, of, you know, fatigue in my shoulder after the last set of inclines. But I didn't get any of it on the closed grip pressing, didn't get any of it on the floor pressing. So 
it seems to be pretty well going away. And it's because I've gone back to all closed grip pressing. That helps. And then working the chin-ups back out for rows, that seems to help. Um, I feel like the, the rows themselves really help me stabilize my shoulder better. And it makes sense because if you think about the rear delt activity happening on it, um, and if I'm going to do them every day, it's going to handle most of my rear delt training. In fact, it handles a lot of your shoulder girdle. People could argue that maybe all you really need for shoulders is going to be things like the rows and the incline. That might actually be enough to completely build your delts. Uh, and we know that chin-ups and pull-ups don't work the rear delts as much as a properly done barbell row. So I think that's going to help. And then obviously I can throw face pulls and stuff in. Uh, I can do other stuff. And I like doing face pulls, so I'll work some of those in. I'll work abs in, all my grip work. Those are things I can always do later. They can be supplemental training. There's stuff that's not going to be as critical. They're just things that I can do uh, just to get some extra volume in in a few places where I might need it for uh, injury prevention, stability, things like that. But, you know, the face pulls will help too because there's really good data on that as far as it working the entire uh, delt, not just the rear head. Uh, but incline bench went pretty good. I got all my desired sets. Uh, and obviously I want to get stronger on these over time, but doing five sets of 10 close grip with even 225, it starts to accumulate very, very quickly, especially after hitting maxes first. It's, it's really all I can handle right now. Those were pretty much limit sets. I would say maybe on the first set I could have got 11 or 12. And by that final set, that last rep, that pause rep is all I have. And I do the pause rep at the end because what I do with that weight, I'm kind of picking a weight that I feel like it's, it's challenging and close to a 10 rep max. And by doing the pause rep as a very last rep, I'm ensuring that I really don't have much left in the tank because that last rep will be the hardest uh, the others, others are just there to build fatigue, build muscle, build hypertrophy. And then that last rep finishes things off by doing it pause once I'm really fatigued. Um, then we did our pen lay rows. And honestly, I had doms from these yesterday. Because I haven't done them in a while. I've been doing only chin-ups. I've been doing no rowing now for, for months. And just doing a strict pen lay row again, I felt doms in my lats. I felt doms in my rear delts this morning. So, uh, obviously they're working, and, and even with 165 pounds, which is what I have on there, you can't see the little smaller plate on the side. People know what my back strength is, and they might say, Jason, that's a very light weight. Yes, it is. But when you're doing them pretty strict, resetting every rep, it counts. It matters a lot. And I'll also get guys who say, I don't know, I don't feel these that much in my lats. And it's like, well, maybe you need to quit cheating. In other words, are you stretching your lats at the bottom? You can't maintain scapular retraction. You've got to ignore some of that nonsense you see. You know, people talk about what lat pull downs and other stuff. Look, your scapula have to come apart. You need your lats to spread so that your lats can pull you out of the bottom. And if your lats explode you off the floor on every rep, they're going to get worked. And if you stay bent over and you don't go upright, notice I don't go upright. Yes, there's a little bit of torso movement, but it's not much. That's going to work your traps, it's going to work your rhomboids, going to work your rear delts. All of that stuff is going to get worked a lot harder if you stay bent over. But if your lats aren't getting worked, it's because you're, you're going too far upright. It's the worst thing you can do on a row. Guys who are like complaining that they don't get big lats from rows, stop going to a 45 degree angle. Quit turning it into a shrug. Bend all the way over. It'll also work your mid traps. It'll work your rhomboids, all of that stuff really effectively. Okay, that's the key to getting all that back development out of it. And for me, I don't cheat on them. I try not to cheat to keep it strict. Then we did incline. Now, I did the rows between. Some people might ask why. They're like, wouldn't that fatigue your inclines? Uh, in theory, yes. But it gives me a break after the close grip press to do my close grip incline. I can probably handle a little more weight. And it worked because I bumped to this weight last time by doing it as the first lift after my max. And I managed to get it, and I got the same thing this time. Was it hard? Yeah. This was a challenging weight for me this deep into the workout. I need to get stronger at it. I would love to be repping 225 for five sets of 10 on this. And I'd say, hey, that's a goal I should work towards. That's a great goal to work towards. Because I need the chest and the delt hypertrophy. And that's why I'm doing these. And I know, five sets of ten, especially after doing all these other exercises, it's a lot. Especially this frequency, but that's what I need. Yeah, it's going to force me to use a lighter weight. 
But what people need to remember, I'm not worried about tension on all this stuff. It's not about getting the most weight on here. I max every day. I hit a big, heavy single. All right, that is going to give us all the benefits we want out of trying to go really heavy. All these other exercises, it's going to be about generating fatigue. It's about getting as much work density as we possibly can, get a lot of training volume in, and pick exercises that we can recover from. And a lot of times, that's going to mean we use slightly less weight. You know, close grip incline bench. I can't use a lot of weight on that, but it's very fatiguing and it stimulates a lot of muscle growth. And it stimulates a lot of muscle growth. So we're trying to pick stuff that we can recover from. Same thing, a pin lay row. You're forced to use a lighter weight, but the muscle activation is tremendous. And if you're forced to use a lighter weight on an exercise that works just as many muscles as another one, it's going to be easier to recover from. And if it's easier to recover from, we can probably do more sets every week. And if we can do more sets, we can give you, stimulate more muscle with better recovery, we're going to grow faster. So a lot of this, that's going to be the name of the game. I'm looking at stimulus versus fatigue and thickening everything up. The only way my bench is going up is if I get my pecs, my delts, my triceps bigger. They have to get bigger. Yes, the max work helps. Yes, the heavy work helps. That helps you actualize your potential. But the volume is where you grow. And yeah, a lot of my upper body workouts are going to start looking fairly bro. Like, man, a bunch of high rep incline benching. Yep. After doing all the other heavier work, right? A bunch of high rep incline benching. Curls, tricep extensions. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, how many of these bros have a monstrous bench press? A lot of them. Look how many tiny bros you see out there who bench big numbers. There's sub 200 pound YouTubers who are total bros, lean guys, big packs, big delts, benching 350, 370, right here on camera, who weigh 180 pounds. Okay. Bro training can build your bench as long as you're willing to bench heavy with it. So we have to just go about it intelligently. So yeah, I'm going to have to do more chest and arm work. We already know my quads and glutes and back and everything are big. That stuff's all big. It's going to need to get bigger for me to get stronger. Got to get thicker. But I'm going to have to put a lot of focus in these, these muscles that we know are going to bring up my bench. So I decided I'm going to be for brevity so that I can get them done quicker. I'm going to be supersetting my curls with my tricep extensions, and I'll just use the same weight. Why? Uh, because they're close enough in strength. Close enough in strength, they'll both put me roughly in the rep range I won't go on to failure, and fatigue is fatigue. These are smaller exercises. Now, I am not doing them as single joint exercises. People are going to note that there's going to be shoulder movement. That is for better muscle activation. All right? We're getting more long head by doing that on the tricep extensions. Getting far, far more long head recruitment of the tricep, and it's easier on the elbow joints. So we get better muscle recruitment, less chance of inflammation. Well, that's a win. So we're going to do tricep extensions this way. And like I said, if I need them to become more focused on the medial and long head, I'll always throw chains on. Right now, I don't need to do that. I'm not overhead pressing, and I'm not doing chin-ups anymore. My main long head work is gone. I'm doing a ton of close grip pressing, a ton of incline benching. My long head's getting neglected. Now, we could argue the long head doesn't matter much on the bench press. But it matters for getting bigger and thicker. Getting a bigger arm, and that bigger arm is probably going to help me indirectly no matter what. It's going to help me no matter what with my overall pressing strength. And I'm still stimulating the other two heads. The thing is that we're working all three heads of the tricep. Uh, my first set of this, by the way, I, I took it out. I tried to do it without a belt. And I'm not used to curling. My low back started cramping. I stopped in the middle of the set, complained, grumped, and it looked terrible. So I needed to get into the rotation of doing the form because I haven't been curling. So the form is pretty atrocious early on here. Um, it cleans up as I get a few sets deeper. And no, I'm not very strong at curls. So I just superseted these back and forth, taking them basically to failure. I try to get stricter. Now, some people are going to ask, Jason, what's up with the, the way you're doing the curls? Why are you coming up to your face? Uh, why are you gripping it narrow? And it has to do with 
activation of the bicep. I'm not doing five different bicep movements here, guys. I'm not doing five bicep movements. I'm doing one type of curl, and I'm going to do a lot of weekly volume on it. I'm picking a variation that's going to be easy on my tendons that's going to activate the muscle completely. All right, the bicep's a pretty small muscle. It doesn't do a lot of different things. But part of what it does is shoulder extension, and one of the heads of the bicep cannot be fully developed just by hinging the elbow, okay? You need shoulder movement up at the top to work the secondary function of one of the two heads of the bicep. So basically only one of the heads gets completely activated just by elbow movement. So we need that upward travel. Notice I have my wrist bent back a hair because that's easier on the tendons in your forearms. So we get less chance of inflammation because that really was a problem for me when I was doing the strict curls before. And by gripping it narrower, we've got some pretty good data showing that the narrower grip on the easy bar gives you more activation of the brachialis without any loss of activation of the bicep. So getting another muscle involved. More brachialis could help my bench press. Why? Because it would give me a bigger bicep in general. Because the brachialis is right down there under the bicep down at the elbow. If you grow both of them, it can help you spring out of the bottom of a bench. It's as simple as that. Bigger biceps can indirectly improve your bench press. It would behoove me if I want a bigger bench to take advantage of that and to spend some real time working on them. And yeah, the rows will help. The rows will help with the radial brachialis and brachialis and all that. But if I'm going to do a curl, I want a, I want a curl type that's going to let me build as much upper arm as possible. And this will fit the bill. And I might start doing them strict up against the rack again because there is a little bit of cheating here. It's not that bad because if you're hitting failure, you're hitting failure. So, and at first I wasn't controlling you. Now I'm trying to control the eccentric a little bit on the way down. Trying to get a good flex of the muscle, not necessarily getting a mind muscle connection, but I'm trying to make sure I do squeeze it a little bit at the top, I'm trying to control the eccentric enough, but still, you know, doing some real work with the heaviest weight that I can handle with reasonably good form. And it's going to take a little while. Yes, I know that's an extremely lightweight. My biceps are not particularly strong, but my biceps are not particularly big. And the only way they're going to grow is to work them. The only way they're going to grow is to work them. And so I'm going to be a little bit loose with form. I'm not worried about being super strict because people recall. People used to say that all the time. They're like, oh, you probably don't curl very strict. That's why your biceps suck. Till then I started filming some of my bicep work. And I'm like, I've been doing this for years. They're like, I don't get it. You have perfect, beautiful technique and form on these incline curls. Full range of motion, control, everything. Like, yeah, my, my arms don't respond that well to that. In fact, my arms responded decently well to these chin-ups recently. That did more for me than years of incline curls did. But we're done with that experiment for me for now. I still recommend it to a lot of people, but it's on to rows and curls for a while. Uh, and I feel like this should work pretty good. I'm going to have to put just as much effort into it as I did into the chin-ups, but it's also easier for me to get it all on camera every day, so it'll be something that people uh, just recognize as part of what I do. But all in all, good workout, so I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.